Linux Unified Key Setup. Crypt Setup is a utility used to conveniently set up disk encryption based on the DM Crypt kernel module. So this is the tool most commonly used because it's popular across all distributions. It's been around for a long time and it's very solid, it's very trusted, it's very fast, and it's for Linux full disk encryption. And full disk encryption is incredibly important if you care about the data that is on your system and you care that it doesn't wander off somewhere it shouldn't and have someone else have access to it. Now, this does not protect you against uh, something happening to your computer as far as when it's unlocked. So encryption is one of those tools that it's meant to lock up your data at rest. That's an important concept to remember. It won't really protect you from a lot of other attacks, but it will protect you from the physical access to your device while it's off if you've properly implemented this. Now, important parts of implementing this. When you install your Linux distro, whether it's Debian based, Red Hat based, or any of the many, many derivatives, this is pretty much one of the options of all the popular distributions to fully encrypt, not the home drive encryption. It works for that too, but you want to fully encrypt your drive. Now, why would you do this? As I said, if someone, for example, has wandered off with my laptop, my laptop has a lot of things in there, which those things include my SSH keys, which allow access to some of my servers and whatever other information I may have put on there. That being said, the best way to protect against this is having a Lux encrypted partition. So if they were to take the drive out and someone was to try to examine the data on there, it would be well encrypted and very difficult uh, to figure out. Now, you could you brute force it? Not easily. Uh, it can be done. Obviously, if you are just replacing, you're just protecting all this with a password. So if your password is password123, it's protected until someone types in those set of characters and decrypts it. So it's important that you set a good password. What is also important is that you remember the password you set, because I've had people contact me going, hey, I lost access to my server. Uh, what's the easiest way to get around Lux? I'm like, restore from backup. There's not an easy way. That being said, always make sure you have a backup because it does make some people nervous encrypting uh, their drives because there is that higher risk that not only could you lose something from a hardware failure, now you have an extra layer of risk because you could have a memory failure <laughs> a real memory failure of your own memory and uh, forget the password. Now, people have done that. They leave a machine off for a long time. So make sure you, you know, put it in a physical safe, put it somewhere, keep it in your head, whichever your methodology is for doing that. But that's an important aspect to the uh, Lux encryption is it's, it is really good. And being good doesn't just keep people you don't want out. It can keep you out as well. Okay, so we're going to start with something simple. This is a uh, 16 gig flash drive I have plugged in. It's formatted to the EXT4 Linux uh, file system, not encrypted. So that means any data I put on there could easily be read by any Linux machine without any encryption. And this is just a disk utility built into uh, Ubuntu-based distributions. This is particularly Pop! OS. So nothing you really have to do here to get encryption set up in terms of command line or anything like that. It's pretty easy. So this is what it looks like unencrypted. And we're just going to go ahead and format partition. ENCR. I-P-T-E-D, we'll just call it encrypted 16. Type internal for extent four, password Lux. Now, a couple things. The Lux encryption is not well supported on Windows. There is an old project to try to get it on there. But on top of that, it's formatting at ext4, which is also not supported on Windows. Those two things are going to make a challenge if you want this to be interoperable with Windows. This is focused only on Linux. It goes outside the scope of this talk to talk about encrypting on Windows. So we're going to go ahead and go next. It wants to have a password. Now, I'm going to show the password. I don't know why it thinks $123 sign is good for password. At least it does know password123 is weak. So it won't even op give you the option to click next until you have a decent password. Please use a decent password because as strong as the encryption is, the encryption is only good as the password that you use to encrypt it. So an easy password defeats easily strong encryption. Let's go ahead and uh, next format, and it's going to automatically create the file system and create the uh, encrypted partition all in one step. All right, now here's the drive now that it has Lux encryption on it. This is where it may be a little bit confusing to look at. It looks like there's two partitions on the drive, 16 gig each, but in fact, there is only one. Now the unlock right here shows that it is unlocked. So you can see unlocked and then we can mount it right here. So we're going to go ahead and stop this and we're going to lock it. 
and this is what the drive looks like locked. Now, the way locks works, because it's working at the kernel level, it essentially wraps it through the kernel and creates a new device. So when it's not unlocked, it does not create that extra device. And what I mean is, right here is dev SDC. So that is the name assigned to the thumb drive that we put in. And when we unlock it, we put our fancy password one, two, three, and unlock it, we get to see what's inside of that Lux container. Now, it creates, the kernel does, a device map to works like a normal device unlocked. Now, this is how it gets around having all of your applications have to understand anything about encryption. It's treated as just another drive. Um, it just isn't mounted at SDC anymore. The encryption is mounted at dev SDC and then it's mapped to the unlocked right here. And like I said, this is what makes Lux very interesting and very easy to manage because you don't have to have every application be aware because the kernel is aware and taking care of it for you once it's unlocked. And then we can treat this and right by default using this utility, it creates just a single partition uh, right here. So it's just one encrypted ext4 on here. So pretty simple, pretty easy to manage. And anything you do on here is going to be encrypted. And that same password, if you plug this into any other Linux distro that has Lux in it, which is, like I said, pretty much all of them has been around for uh, since 2004 in the kernel. So it's easily read on other Linux uh, instances with the same password. So it's a great secure way to put data onto thumb drives. So let's now show you what it looks like from the operating system level. And I set up an encrypted uh, Debian system to kind of give you an idea. Now, I did this with full disk encryption based on the install. So when you do the install, I chose to install a Debian server with full encryption right from the get-go, and we'll show you how that looks. So I created this in a virtual machine. This is XCPNG with, in case you're not familiar, I have other videos on this. I log into it because it's already booted, and we're just going to restart it. And I'll show you what the boot process looks like on an encrypted drive that's in a VM. Now, the good and bad of doing this, great for security, great if someone ever were to uh, try to take one of my backups of this particular VM, they would not be able to boot it without the password because when it boots up, it loads the kernel because it needs the, at least the kernel to load so it can stream the Lux encryption and unencrypt it. And this is the same way if you do a full distro install, um, it does the same thing. It's going to have a password when it boots. Obviously, this is easy when it's a laptop. Difficult if you're in a virtual server environment because you have to get console access to do this. Beyond the scope of this talk, you, there are ways to have it download a key file from a certain location to unencrypt itself. Those are other methodologies that can be done. Like I said, that's maybe a later video if there's enough interest in this. So now it's booted. We typed in the password. It finished the boot. So let's go and SSH into it. All right, we are now logged into that particular machine. Now, this is how it looks on the other side when you're logged in. The boot device was XVDA, and XVDA1 is the boot partition which contains the Linux kernel. So that's the part that starts that is unencrypted. After that, it's XVDA5, and XVDA5 maps to this right here, dev mapper, dev encrypted VG root, and that is the rest of the file system. So we can have all that encrypted. So anything saved anywhere else with except for boot is going to be encrypted on this machine. So all of the databases, all the things that I may store in here are completely and fully encrypted. All right, so let's talk about kind of how I knew, how I know what is or isn't encrypted. So to give you a better idea here, if we do FDIS L for list XVDA, it's a 30 gig partition I set up for this demo. Um, and it tells you, right here's just a Linux, this is the extended partition, and this is shows as a Linux partition, but it is technically an encrypted partition. So it sees it, but the only way to mount it is via the crypt command. So let's also look at going like this, talk about the crypt setup and how the command structure works for it. So we're going to do crypt setup lux dump dev xvda5. And what this does, it lists all what they refer to as the key slots that are in there. So for each lux encrypted device, you can have multiple key slots. And what those key slots do is each key slot is just a password in there. That password can be changed per key. Now it's just extra keys that are not necessary, but neat that you can do them. Because what these extra keys do is you can have two passwords that unlock the same Lux encryption drive. And that way, if you ever wanted to revoke a second password, but keep the primary password, you could later revoke it if there was some reason to do so. But it also means different people can have different keys to restart the machine, kind of gives you different revocation methods. So just a thought, it is something that is built into there, which I think is pretty slick. Now, what about 
volatility of this. Obviously, there's some risk added when you add Lux encryption. Well, specifically, the risk that's added is this right here. Crypt setup, Lux header backup, dev xpda5 header backup file, and I just named it luckyheader.bin. Why did I do that? Well, this is where the challenge can come in with Lux. Lux just relies on a header file. The rest of the drive is noise. So if there's some data corruption in that drive, you can't just run FSCK against it to fix it. Not if the header's corrupted. If it hits that header, if some type of corruption messes that up, you have lost the drive because without the first piece of that header that is stored on the drive, the rest of the drive cannot be decrypted. That is a critical piece to how Lux works. So one of the recommended things for security, and it's up to you, is to back up the header.bin. I say it's up to you because the other way that we handle is we're less worried about backing up the header file. We back up the entirety of the data set itself. So if I ever ended up with one of the volumes I have encrypted with Lux, I would check my shoulders and restore from backups um, as opposed to just trying to do the header bin. The risk with the header bin is, of course, now you have some of the information uh, that it, we, you would be storing outside that system to restore that header, which, of course, I guess you could put it on a Lux encrypted thumb drive as well. Um, but then if it doesn't boot, there's a process to getting that header bin restored. How do we get that header restored? It's actually pretty easy. Uh, this was Lux header backup. There's a Lux header restore command. And you type in yes and it restores the header. Now, another thing about the way Lux setup works, this is uh, case sensitive. So when you see things like um, create and Lux format, Lux kill slot, Lux resume, remove, resize status, um, they're all case sensitive. So it's not that it just has an uppercase letter in here for Lux open or Lux header backup. If we were trying to type the same command, Lux header restore, and I just didn't capitalize the R, it won't work. So please note the case sensitivity nature of the Lux commands. So what about changing a password? So I set my system up and it had me type a password and I want to change it. Do I have to re-encrypt the drive? No. So Re-encrypting the drive is not necessary with Lux. We can just do Lux setup change key. Now, you may have noticed that there's multiple key slots and there's two of them in use. What it does is it wants to know the password of the key I want to be changed. So if I type a password that matches the key, I typed one that didn't on purpose right now, no key matching this passphrase. So let's try it again. I type the key that does match the passphrase and our new passphrase. Verifies the passphrase, and it takes a second. And now this drive, once this pops back, is now rekeyed on boot to have a different password. Please make sure you don't forget what you typed. That's obviously a really important factor in doing this because it's that quick to rekey a drive. But if you forget the password, oops, I think I know he typed it wrong that time on accident. <laughs> and our password to be changed. Change it back. Now we've rekeyed this drive to there. And remember, this is the passphrase on boot. And when you do this, you can also add new keys. So there's options to uh, do the same thing. It was actually the command is going to be, I think it is, yeah, Lux add key. So now we can add another passphrase to unlock this drive. And sometimes this is a good way to do it as well from, from a sanity check of add a new key before you remove the old key. And there's a way you can delete the key as well. So those are a couple of different factors. Now, another way to set up your server so you don't have to get console access every single time you boot, because obviously that can be very pain, is to set up a second hard drive that you store your data on that is encrypted. That means you would be able to boot up your virtual machines. And this is frequently the way we set them up. We don't necessarily load the whole virtual machine encrypted, but we attach a data drive to it that is encrypted. That way the machine will boot up and I have to actively log into the machine because they're sometimes a remote and far away where I can't easily get to them and then type in the password to decrypt the drive where the actual database is, where the files are kept, where the actual critical data is. Um, this is a convenience over security. So it's hard to get inside of a data center necessarily and take a machine out. So you're in the list worried about that. But if you have the data in an encrypted part, cool. But if you have to reboot the machine, which happens when there's a kernel update, um, I know you can use kernel splicing to avoid those. But if you have to reboot a machine or there's an outage at the data center that causes the power to go out and come back on, physically logging into machines from a console access can be challenging. So that's why you frequently want to load the machine if it's a server and then encrypt the data drive attached to it. So now let's cover that part and how that works. So if we do fdisk-l, we list out all the drives. So we have the 
disk XVDB, which is the second 15 gig hard drive, and we have the boot one XVDA that we've been working on. So we're gonna start with this. So let's make sure there's no partitions on it. Dev XVDB. Nothing, free, blank space. Now, normal process, you would make FS. Well, you create some partitions and you do a make FS and create partitions on it. But we want this to be a Lux encrypted drive. So we're going to create one. Starts with the crypt setup command, like they all the Lux formats do. Lux formats, dev, x, v, db. Yes, we want to destroy it with an precarious yes. Create a password for it. And that's it. We've created the Lux container. So now if we go back to CF disk, it warns me that if I write this, it's a Crips Lux uh, signature on there and I'd be overwriting that header and destroying it. We certainly don't want to do that. But there's no partition. We didn't format it. The UI version, when we do this in a GUI, makes it easy because it does all this in one step. This is what happens when you're doing it manually. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to say Crypt Setup. Lux open because the only thing we did was create the container with a password, but we didn't open it or mount it. So it was dev xv because we're dealing with it as a device. Now we got to get the device a name, and this is where it shows up in the mapper part. So we're going to call this uh, data drive. I spell drive right. Actually, we'll D A T A D R I. We'll use uh, case sensitivity here. So we're going to crypt set up lux open, which means unlock this partition and then create a data drive. So go here, type in the password. All right. Now we're going to go over here to dev mapper. There is my data drive. Now let's look at how behind the scenes that's working. So as I said, because this works at the kernel level, it creates a new device for each unencrypted drive. That way, when you have these drives, they are completely treated like any other hard drive and the kernel is taking care of all the abstraction layer of doing the encryption and decryption and getting the right getting the data to the device in an encrypted manner but then your programs accessing it access it like any other hard drive so it added it to data drive and it's pointing at dm3 behind the scenes in case you're wondering as why i did it that way uh, to show you but you can give it you know easier easy to remember names and you can write scripts obviously to do this this can all this can all be scripted so now that we've done that, the only thing we haven't done is create a file system. So now, because it's done there, we, like I said, we want to create the file system inside the encrypted container. So we're going to make fs.ext4 slash dev mapper, because that's where, you, that's where it stores or unlocks and creates all the unlocked devices that can be treated like a normal file system. And once again, make fs doesn't have to be any awareness of the encryption it's taken care of at the kernel level so it just doesn't make fs as if this is any other storage device done now what if i wanted to fsck that i can do that i once again if i need to fsck um dev mapper data drive you can do your standard fsck tools and everything else it works just like a regular drive and if we go over here to slash mount make dir data we would do mount slash dev mapper data drive mount data shows up like any other mounted drive so it's really simple how it works once you kind of get the under concept of it's streaming through the kernel uh, and handling it behind the scenes so everything you create with lux open it adds another device here and like i said all this can be scripted and then you choose where you want it to mount so it mounts and all of your data goes inside of here, but anything that goes inside of data now under that mount is automatically encrypted under the Lux side. And we can close this, we can open it. Every time it reboots, it does require the password be put back in. Like I said, there's ways you can automate some of that, but of course at the risk of security. But this is a good way to make sure all of your data is encrypted. So you would store all of the data that's critical to the machine so the machine can be rebooted remotely, SSH back in remotely, and then manually mount the data drive back so whatever services are running on it can start. And this is a good way when you have remote servers set up to lock down the data so they're encrypted in case anyone physically tries to take the server because obviously that's really a big concern. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it gets you an idea and get started with uh, Lux. It's amazing, easy to use once you have a few concepts down and there's a lot of documentation for it. And the last piece I'll leave you with is the Arch Linux uh, wiki on this is the DMCrypt device encryption. 
it's outstanding in detail of all the different functions you can do, talking about how to do things with keys, how to do all kinds of functions with it. So um, there's a lot more to Lux. This is just to get you started. So if you have something really specific or different use cases, there's a lot more expanded options, but this is great disk encryption. At the minimum, you should be using it on um, any of your computers, whether it's a laptop, desktop, um, you know, in case anyone ever walks off of the drives or in the case that you have to send a drive out, you want to make sure that data is encrypted. Um, it's arbitrary to use. And with modern processors that have AES modules uh, for encryption, decryption, there's really not a speed loss on this. It's so minimal. It's not like you're uh, having a performance issue when you encrypt it, which is wonderful about the way this works. So like I said, get started on it here. If you want to continue the discussion, I'll be posting this in my forums. Uh, you know, if there's some follow-up videos on how to do some more things and there's an interest in this, let me know and maybe I'll make a follow-up video or just answer the questions in the forums. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.